Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, maintainer track for Falco. Avoid a little wind and catch the jet stream using Falco to detect attackers and compliance violation. I am Luca and I work as a software engineer at Sysdig and I'm joined here and I'm also a Falco maintainer and I'm joined here with the other awesome Falco maintainers. Uh, we have Carlos who is a software engineer and very expert coffee maker at Chainguard and uh, also I'm joined by Jason also a software engineer at Sysdig and Melissa a security engineer at Apple. So. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, Falco and I guess that uh, if you're in the maintainer track for Falco you know uh, what, uh, what we're talking about but uh, anyways as a refresher Falco is an open source uh, uh, security project uh, for threat detection across Kubernetes uh, containers, hosts, and the cloud. It started uh, as a project uh, to detect uh, any suspicious events via rules uh, in system call, uh, via rules uh, using system calls uh, in your hosts uh, and your containerized environment, uh, and then gain the ability to inspect Kubernetes as well. And then uh, now with uh, its powerful plugin system uh, is extended to the cloud and pretty much every sort of event that you can think about it. Uh, Falco is uh, currently, uh, uh, currently a CNCF incubation level project, but I have some uh, exciting news to share that uh, the Falco maintainer and contributor community have, have worked uh, uh, very hard uh, to get uh, the Falco project uh, closer to graduation and uh, indeed uh, we, we made uh, a lot of progress uh, and uh, I am very happy to say that uh, we have passed uh, I think what is uh, the most important part of the graduation pro process uh, which uh, is uh, uh, knowing that the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee uh, has decided that uh, uh, Falco is mature enough uh, to really proceed to graduation. Of course, uh, uh, we are still working a lot with the community to get it to complete graduation, but really uh, we just wanted to take this time uh, to say thank you to uh, actually you, the, the not just the code contributors, but the people that use Falco, the adopters, and everyone that made it actually successful and not just a, a simple open source project that someone at the company started one day. So just stay tuned for a graduated version, uh, well, for a graduated in the CNCF Falco. Uh, but anyways, Falco is not just uh, talking about graduation. Uh, Falco, uh, the Falco project uh, has been working a lot uh, to uh, be easier to use uh, for everyone to have better detection capability and to have better security and uh, and all these things. And uh, I would uh, like to um, to ask uh, Melissa and uh, to give uh, the word to Melissa, who has worked a lot to uh, about something uh, that uh, has been a, a big. Uh, point uh, that people needed to learn about Falco, that is the rules. How can we make them uh, easier to use and easier to contribute to? Thanks, and I also have more thank yous here. So we're very grateful to our community for contributing nearly 90 Falco rules. That's pretty impressive. And we're also happy to announce that we have introduced a formal rules maturity framework to make it easier for everyone to navigate and use the Falco rules. We also added a new guide to our website on how to adopt Falco rules in production. We hope that all these efforts promote further the consistency, ease of use, adoption and innovation so that everyone from experienced security engineers to newcomers to the field can get the most out of the upstream Falco rules. Falco rules are now split into different files according to their maturity level. The most mature and stable rules are included in the default Falco package. They address broader threats, provide universal system level detections, and follow best practices for optimal robustness. Incubating rules still address relevant threats. They provide a certain level of robustness, and you can say that they cater to more specific use cases. Sandbox rules are more experimental. They can serve as an inspiration, and they also adhere to the minimum acceptance criteria. Occasionally, we do deprecate Falco rules. Sometimes it can be confusing to understand why one rule is considered to be more stable or more relevant than another rule. Therefore, we would like to emphasize that this is a best effort on our part, and ultimately you have to decide which Falco rules are relevant to your environment. And most likely you still have to create a lot of custom rules. 
Falco now also has a formal rule style guide. The description needs to be a little bit more informative than just one sentence and also include some tuning advice. The condition statement needs to be syntactically correct. For performance and consistency reasons, we ask you to first place the event types, followed by all of your positive expression filters, and lastly, you would place your exclusions, such as tuning lists or macros. Falco's output fields are now also much more consistent across rules, and I would like to draw your attention to the special placeholder field, container info. If you run Falco with certain command line flags, which we go into more detail in our guides, it will automatically resolve to the most important Kubernetes and container fields, such as namespace, pod name, container name, tag. And please keep in mind, you can always manually add any field that we're supporting. The tax property now also includes much more information. Again, here we see the maturity level, but also the MITRE attack phase. And uh, if a rule is applicable to a compliance use case, it also contains new tags in that regard. The main message of the slide is that you have to allocate a lot of engineering resources, not just to adopt the upstream Falco rules, but also create your own custom rules. So basically expect that cycle of experimentation, deploying, tuning to never stop. And it's all about finding the right balance between the scope and the noise. And also keep in mind that every Falco release will contain new capabilities that will empower you to create even more powerful Falco rules. To wrap up the Falco rules update, by default, Falco matches the first condition statement that evaluates to true. Uh, sometimes rules, they can overshadow each other. Now you can choose between the default first match wins or match all Falco rules. Most likely we'll probably have a little bit of a performance hit here. Talking about performance, security monitoring never has unlimited security budgeting. Therefore, we take performance very seriously, and there have been a couple of exciting updates in that space as well. Falco CPU usage is highly correlated with how massive your servers are and the number and frequency of system calls. Under the hood, Falco monitors all system calls from each of your Falco rule, but we also add extra system calls for Falco's internal state. The default configuration, configuration is a very conservative. Now we provide you as an end user full override control, uh, control so you can tailor Falco even more to your use cases and most likely you will be able to reduce CPU utilization. Talking about CPU utilization, Falco now natively supports a very powerful metrics framework. Besides the traditional CPU and memory usages, we also um, expose more sophisticated metrics such as libppf stats or all of our internal event counters or drop counters. And we're also very proud to announce that Falco has been selected as the first project for the CNCF Tech Environmental Sustainability and Green Reviews effort. These efforts involve testing Falco against a CNCF-hosted test Kubernetes cluster with synthetic workloads. That way, we will be able to report how Falco's usage, uh, usage changes between releases and also how much Falco was using on that particular test cluster. Falco's kernel driver modernization marks yet another milestone to celebrate. We could probably give an entire talk just about the modern eBPF. Therefore, I'll keep it brief. In the past, you had to compile Falco's kernel driver for each kernel release. That means that every time you upgrade your kernel, you had to make sure that the new kernel driver was available. Sometimes this would sacrifice production stability. Now with the modern eBPF driver, none of this is needed anymore. In fact, you don't even need to pass the kernel headers when you compile the driver. And all this is made possible by the compile once, run everywhere feature. Your kernel needs to be greater equal 5.8 or support uh, have backported BTF support. And in summary, uh, this is a real joy from a DevOps and testing perspective. And Luca has more to talk about kernel versions. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, yes, indeed, uh, it's, uh, it's great to have uh, another option uh, to, to run Falco in your kernel. But uh, um, kernel, even being uh, uh, relatively happy about the fact that, that uh, we think our software works on most of the kernel is not that easy. 
If you were here uh, last year in Detroit when we were talking about Falco, first of all, you were a hero because I think we were talking on a Friday afternoon. So in that case, kudos to you, absolutely. But what we were saying, among other things, uh, is that uh, uh, the, uh, when we, you try to test something like Falco that needs to operate uh, at a kernel level plus uh, with low level user space component, you find lions and dragons in everything that you want to test. And specifically, uh, we have improved uh, so much in the last year and a half, I think, on testing. But if we want to think about what are the dragons that you find uh, when you try to actually test something in the kernel, it's mostly the fact that uh, when, when you try to test something in the same system that you're instrumenting, you're going to, to uh, have some uh, interesting challenges to face. Uh, and, uh, and not only that, if you think about writing kernel code, uh, pretty much uh, from a developer standpoint uh, in Linux, uh, you can think uh, about the kernel community to, of having one rule, the fact that they don't break uh, user space, so they don't break uh, the uh, boundary of the system, the system call interface. But when you are inside the kernel, uh, between every version of the Linux kernel plus the vendor patches that also exist, uh, you pretty much can see everything change, and that's normal. So uh, from our standpoint, uh, where we have to develop uh, a module and a BPF probe, we need to make sure that our software works uh, with a kernel that many people have. We would like, we would love to have it working with all kernels. But uh, before, um, Melissa also mentioned the fact that uh, we love our new eBPF probe that doesn't require you to build and doesn't require us to build a specific version of the probe for every system by using Core. Uh, but eBPF poses an additional challenge that's called uh, the eBPF verifier, which is this piece of uh, code in the kernel that will tell you if your eBPF program is safe enough to run. And that thing is also fragmented because every distribution has its own version of the verifier and every kernel version has its own version. So something that could be safe for my kernel could not be safe for yours. And we want to test this. This ended up uh, as a very cool project that uh, has uh, now that we built with an entire testing framework. We have uh, uh, something that is able to orchestrate virtual machines to boot directly uh, small machines uh, with a lot of uh, custom versions of the kernels uh, based on both distributions and version uh, alongside uh, a developer experience uh, that should be good enough for people, contributors and maintainers to be able to reproduce the bug and to be able to fix it. So uh, it would be, uh, I think uh, we definitely don't have uh, enough time to talk uh, about uh, how this is actually designed. So uh, I would encourage if you're interested to read our blog post uh, because we, we added a lot of detail, but the, the result uh, to us, uh, we, we have a certain sense of beauty for us. It's beautiful because uh, we can get uh, more than 20 versions uh, of kernel and, uh, and uh, distributions tested continuously with uh, two CPU architectures uh, and a lot of different configuration module, BPF uh, and verifier and, and everything. The, thanks a lot for this project for uh, CNCF, actually, for giving us access to an Equinix metal uh, cluster that is a bare metal cluster that allows us to actually run virtual machines. Uh, so, but uh, Falco is not just being tested, but also wants to improve its ability to detect the things. And uh, that, that ability can be sometimes something simple as that. What would happen if I run this command? What would Falco say about this command? I mean, if I, I, I just symlinked a binary into another, a cat symlinked into dog, and if I didn't show you the first line, it would be fine to answer in the way that Falco before 036 was answering. So that's technically correct. We have a process name that is dog and exe and exepath that are the same. That's, that's right. But if you are doing security detection with that, you are probably interested in knowing what, if there was a symlink, you probably want to see it. And for, um, as, a, as a feature, since Falco 036, we improved the ability for Falco to uh, resolve these cases. And so you can see that uh, we changed the meaning of the exipath field to something that is uh, uh, that uh, according to community feedback is actually far more intuitive for security professionals uh, rather than what was displayed before. So we now actually have uh, a distinction between dog and cat in this example. And also another 
comment that we had is for another thing that it's even more subtle in the, in the kernel, is the fact that if you have ever run a PS3 on your system, for example, if you're running a container or something, you will notice that in, uh, in, the Linux, uh, in a Linux system, every process uh, is organized in a hierarchical fashion. There is the one uh, parent of them all that uh, is the init process, uh, can be systemd, can be depending on the, on the system, there can be something, and everything is a, a descendant of that. And uh, here I just ran a container and everything was nice in container land. There was a container dish shim and then there was an Nginx that I executed. And then, of course, I went there with my user terminal and I tried to do a Docker exec. And this is just an example of something that, that can happen. And what do I expect with PS3? Of course, I see that uh, there are two uh, processes sibling to each other that are actually running uh, in uh, in, uh, in our container. But that's not actually what happens uh, in, uh, when uh, I spawn this uh, these, uh, exec. Because what happens in that, uh, in that case uh, is that uh, actually there is another process that is run C that uh, uh, is uh, very, uh, very used uh, in a lot of container engines. Uh, and this process will actually exit uh, and uh, has a child that is uh, my shell. In this operation, there are a certain amount of reparenting uh, operations that happen in the kernel that made it so that Falco, from its view in the events, uh, would sometimes uh, create a broken link. So at the detection time, when you wanted to know what actually spawned that shell, you couldn't know because the Falco didn't know the, the parent. In this case, in this version, we, made, uh, we did a lot of work uh, to make it better, to have uh, better detections uh, so that when you try to print the fields uh, about uh, all the ancestors of, of process, uh, you actually have something uh, that resembles more what you intuitively would expect by running PS3. And uh, Falco and uh, as, as usual, I always love when I can improve the security of the Falco project itself. This is a never-ending work. Uh, I will not be done anytime soon, and neither will be all as maintainer. But anyways, uh, this time uh, we uh, worked a lot on some supply chain security topics. We created the signatures uh, for not just container images, but also plugins and rules uh, that we distribute. Uh, for the, to do this, uh, we used a, te a technology which is a Cosign, which is a uh, pretty popular uh, nowadays uh, and for good reasons, I think. And uh, also we added uh, a distroless image uh, so that uh, you can actually have uh, a Falco image that runs uh, in your system uh, with uh, zero CVs. That's uh, because uh, it has much uh, less things. I would love to tell you all about this, uh, but uh, in the maintainer community, we have Carlos, uh, who is a maintainer for some of these uh, cool projects that we have used to build upon. So, uh, Carlos, would you like to tell us how we made Falco better with, uh, with this? Yeah. Uh, this is more a, a project level update. Like, we are signing uh, the images and blobs across the entire org uh, for Falco. It's not only for Falco, but all the other projects as well. The Falco CTL, Falco Southkick, and others. Like uh, before, I continue. Like uh, just to understand, like who knows what is the six Torco sign to? Can I raise your hand? Okay, I'm gonna g give a quick an explanation. Cosign is a tool to sign images and blobs, and that uses the six uh, public infrastructure that is running uh, almost uh, like for now, I, uh, almost two years now in, in a public space. And the uh, six-star uh, organization have, uh, is backed by the Linux Foundation as well. And uh, with that, we are signing uh, our, oh, let's go here. Uh, we are signing not only the images we, you guys are consuming, but also the, the blobs. And we are now signing also the plugins and rules. And uh, if you use Falco CTL to install uh, your uh, plugins, it, uh, Falco CTL also before installing that in your cluster, it can detect, uh, check the signatures if that plugin you are trying to install, it's, valid, it's signed and uh, verified all the credentials for that. With that, like uh, you can use Fox CTL to install the, the plugin and verify the signature, but also you can use Cosign tool to uh, verify the, the signature for the rules and the plugin itself. You can take a look on the, on the blog that was written that explain a little bit more, and also like I can talk about that later on as well. 
The next uh, one that we like did, I think this is like a huge upgrade. We are using the Wolfie. Uh, Wolfie is an open source tool like the org that produces uh, images and packages. And the uh, Wolfie is like we call it the undistro distribution, like because they, there's, there is no kernel in, in the image. It's just the package and the, the, it's like a, re, we can call it like a, a V2 of the distro less. And the Falcon now, we are building that in the distro less way as well. That makes the, the, the image itself like smaller and like as Luca mentioned, like with a near zero CVs. And if we find any CV, we can like rebuild that like pretty fast as well. And uh, you, we are, I think we are publishing both uh, Falco distro less and the normal uh, image that uh, everybody was consuming in the past, but uh, you can try out this new one here and provide feedback to us if it's fitting in your uh, workload space. And uh, last and but not least, uh, we also did like a lot of uh, documentation improvements. We revamped our uh, website, like you can check in the folk.org. There's a, a lot of new stuff there, like there's a lot of uh, uh, how-tos, there is like a glossary and a lot of things that are examples and things about rules and plugins that uh, you can use. If you go there and find uh, that is uh, like uh, not uh, correct or missing things, uh, like um, we are waiting for you like to open issues and even PRs to fix that for us as well and help us to make it better. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. So, um, speaking about the plugin feature, which was mentioned a couple of times already, uh, I wanted to give like a bit of retrospective of what happens here. So, we first launched the feature uh, almost two years ago, I think six releases ago for sure. And the main goal of that was to support new kinds of events. In the specific, we leveraged this feature to implement cloud logs threat detection. So for example, the first use case was AWS CloudTrail, Kubernetes audit logs, and then we got GitHub and Okta. Uh, plus, extracting new data fields to be used uh, for in Falc rules for those kind of events. That opened many new use cases for the project, uh, but at the same time, the core goal of Falc was still endpoint and system security. So this led to the intention of renovating the plugin system to support most of the feature that the core code of Falco already do, and basically become a real extension framework for Falco itself, basically. Uh, speaking about capabilities that we added uh, briefly, we now are fully compatible with system calls and kernel events, so now you can create plugins that hooks, uh, big hook into the uh, system call event stream, and are capable of generating those and extracting new data fields from those. Plus, they can do stateful detections, such as Falco itself, and keep and maintain internal state, and share it with Falco and other plugins as well. For example, now a plugin can access all the thread information and, and the, you know, the process lifecycle information that Falco collects natively, and also enrich it. Another minor thing that people don't know we do under the hood is that we communicate, for example, with the container runtime and collect uh, information asynchronously and put it back inside the event stream so that Falco can update the state with that. Uh, plugins can do that as well. Doesn't mean anything, I think, uh, without few examples of what the new use cases can be. So take, for example, Kubernetes metadata enrichment. Whenever you receive a Falco alert, uh, you can have uh, information about, uh, you know, the Kubernetes objects that are related or at least something about the cluster or the deployment. So this implementation is very historical and we maintain it since years, let's say, but we have uh, performance concerns, the scalability concerns on big clusters. And since Falco is still the probably most widely adopted uh, open source tool for threat detection in Kubernetes, uh, we wanted to make this first class citizen integration better. And uh, reinventing this has some challenges because this needs to observe all the system calls related to process lifecycle. It needs to maintain internal state about the Kubernetes objects it needs to observe. And plus, it needs to communicate that information to Falco asynchronously after communication with the API server. Look, this is exactly what the plugin system offers nowadays, and this is exactly what we are doing in the implementation phase and redesign phase of this feature. So from now on, we will drop in the next FALC release, which will come in January, the legacy implementation that we have, and we are in the development process of creating uh, a new, more scalable, and more optimized one, uh, leveraging the plugin system. If you don't want it, you cannot use it, basically. And uh, if you want to use it, it will be an add-on that you can use on FALC or dynamically. 
Another thing, uh, which is actually proposed by Melissa, is uh, a statistical runtime anomaly detection framework, which is in the working and under proposal, uh, which will basically allow you to see what's normal in your workload, let's say, automatically and dynamically, and that will probably leverage the plugin system as well. So the long-term vision of this is for the core of Falco to become more more minimal, to reduce to the bare minimum the footprint it has on your system, for the whole case at least, and then have um, a wide ecosystem of many uh, individual and minimal plug and play modules that you can just add on depending on your use case. Uh, the end goal of this is customizability, which is the one thing that you know adopters ask us the most, given that uh, the range of use cases of Falco is very diverse in the ecosystem. Non-technical updates involve uh, the plugins now being signed, uh, like mentioned before, which is like a very good thing for our automatic distribution system from a, you know, a trust perspective. And now we also made on top of, the, on top of this, uh, the publishing and testing pipelines in RCI more robust and resilient. So now we are capable of uh, you know, retrieving errors very early on. And you can expect whenever you uh, listen to our latest updates with Falco CTL that everything is sound. We are, we are much more reliable. Then the C++ SDK for writing plugins has been reinvented as well for performance, basically. So now this maximizes performance by inlining code whenever possible. And given the control on memory and everything that C++ gives you, this is also the SDK that uh, has enabled access to all the new capabilities of the plugin framework. It's still not official in you know, our uh, officiality framework we added in our governance recently, but it's heavily optimized and fully functional, so give it a try. And last but not least, we have a new plugin in our family, uh, which was actually contributed by uh, a newcomer in our community. It was very cool, and now we committed to maintain it um, from now on, which involves threat detection for GCP audit logs. Now, this one I'm pretty excited about. So Falco participated in the Google Summer of Project this year, and uh, this uh, definitely starts our first steps into the world of WebAssembly, which is not very common uh, you know, in the CNCF landscape yet. We, we try to experiment to the best of our, um, of our possibilities. So the problem we are trying to solve here is that Falco rules, people like them because they're easy to understand and more, you know, much expressive. But you'll probably notice if you try to write them that they're not that easy to develop, mostly because it's a try and error process. So you use your favorite ID to do that. You dump the rules in Falco for syntactic checks. If that doesn't work, go back to step one. Assuming that everything is good, use them in Falco, trying to see if they trigger in the situation that you expect them to do so. If not, go back to step one. And Falco is the one tool in the middle that allows to do everything through the CLI. It's not very handy, and this, I think, uh, sort of makes the learning curve not favorable for newcomers. So now we are capable of running Falco natively in the browser because WebAssembly is a compilation target uh, that we officially support in our packages. And uh, we gained a new maintainer in the process, and this solution is a web ID that is now deployed in our community, and uh, it's totally backendless because Falco really runs, and you can try that in the QR code with your phone. It works on mobile too. Uh, the long-term vision for this project is to further integrate it in our website and uh, use that for more in-depth documentation, snippets, and tutorials. For the future, uh, what are we focusing on for you know, the near-term roadmap? Uh, as I said, the integration with Kubernetes, we're trying to put some love in that because we recognize the importance that we have for us as an integration. And the redesign and implementation of the clients for metadata enrichment is the proof of that. And then it, the biggest concern that we have and goal is the roadmap to version 1.0, which involves probably mostly quality improvement and optimization. We want Falco to be reliable and to be as fast as possible to reduce to the bare minimum the overhead in your system. And all the things that I mentioned before are basically some parts of this process, but that's our focus. Then threat detection. Uh, we want the threat detection capability of Falco to be more, you know, more and more sophisticated at every release. A uh, few things are, are already mentioned, been mentioned by the others, like the uh, Symlink resolution for executions. We now also care about uh, fileless uh, executions by listening to the MMFD uh, system calls, and we are trying to go faster and faster in the development of these things. And then ease of usage, uh, working on the website, trying to create more default use cases, make life easier to adopters, for adopters to develop Falco rules. We want the learning curve of a you know, more, much technical project like Falco to be as optimal as possible for people. 
then please uh, don't forget to reach out to us. You can find all of us, plus the other maintainers and all the contributors and people in the community in our official channels, in the mailing list as well. And we meet every Wednesday on the Wilkie community, community call. We discuss uh, uh, you know, bugs, feature requests, planning, and all that. We're also gonna do a sign off of the Falco book tomorrow uh, from Loris, uh, is one of the author and also the founder of the project historically. So feel free to find out and ask us about that. Thank you for listening. I think it's time for Q&A. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you.